Okay, testing is good. Everything's working. <clears throat> All right. Hi, everybody. It's um, meteorologist Joe Chaffee here on this uh, Thursday uh, as we head into the midday hour. And uh, good morning to Wayne, Anthony. Uh, good morning. And also to go lightly, Anthony, you need to pay attention um, because uh, I'm starting to get uh, a little cons uh, a bit concerned about uh, what may happen in, in South Florida. And um, last night, uh, during the overnight, I haven't really looked at it very much, uh, although it is, it, it does work well um, much of the time. The UK, um, the, the British model or the UK Met model uh, showed uh, Irma a little further west, and now the new NAM has shifted decidedly to the west, bringing a full landfall uh, into South Florida, uh, somewhere over the western keys, uh, and uh, um, it doesn't go out far enough for me to see a track, so... You know, for South Florida, um, if the uh, models continue to trend to the left, if the other models start to follow along, this is uh, seriously going to increase uh, your risk for uh, widespread damage uh, with um, Hurricane Irma as it moves in. And also, uh, on a separate note, which we'll get to, uh, Hurricane Jose continues to strengthen and uh, the track on Jose has been as with been, has been the case much of this season the trends have been west and south and a hurricane watch is now up for the leeward islands again can you imagine if they wind up getting hit by a major hurricane back to back like this in just a matter of days um, but a hurricane watch in effect now for the leeward islands uh, for um, Jose uh, let me uh, go over uh, what is going on with respect to the new hurricane watches that are up now for Florida. We have uh, a hurricane watch for the Florida Peninsula from Jupiter Inlet south uh, and around the peninsula to Bonita Beach, okay, uh, which is on the western side. Uh, and that includes all of the Florida Keys, Lake Okeechobee, and Florida Bay. Uh, we have uh, also storm surge watches issued from uh, Jupiter Inlet to uh, Bonita Beach. Uh, warnings are up for the Bahamas, uh, the Dominican Republic from Capo Engano and the northern border to Haiti. Um, Haiti from the northern border with the Dominican Republic to Le Mole and Saint, uh, uh, Le Mole and Saint uh, Nicholas. Uh, the southeastern Bahamas, Turks and Caicos, central Bahamas, um, uh, northwestern Bahamas, all under uh, a hurricane warning at the time. Uh, Cuba under a hurricane watch from Matanzas province east to Guantanamo. Uh, we uh, have tropical storm warnings, various tropical storm warnings up uh, as well. So let, let me uh, first off, we'll go to the uh, advisory. We'll put the, the Hurricane Center's forecast track. Uh, and this is the uh, 8 a.m. So let me see if they got the new one in. And hopefully they do. It's trying to load. I guess everybody's trying to get in there at the same time. Um, here's Irma on the satellite loop. We'll come back to the advisory and hope it'll be there. And you can see the motion has been fairly st steady west-northwestward. It hasn't really changed very much, uh, just uh, kind of moving right along and heading right for uh, the Turks and Caicos Islands. It still has that kind of buzzsaw look to it, uh, getting maybe a, a shade ragged because of the circulation being over uh, the Dominican Republic to some degree. But the eye is clearing the Dominican Republic by a good 60 miles. So the eye wall is staying offshore. Uh, here is the 8 a.m. So did they have the 11 a.m. yet? Nope, still waiting. So we'll come back to that um, with regards to um, what's happening. Now let's look at the Atlantic satellite because Jose has developed an eye uh, right there. And you can see the leewards and it's moving on a course. Looks like it's moving a bit more westerly than it has been. Uh, and uh, that uh, is perhaps going to put it very, very close to the Leeward Islands uh, before this is all said and done. I'm going to switch right now. We'll go to the uh, NAM model from today. And let me set it up for you. The new NAM. Now, unfortunately, the NAM, uh, because it's the North American model, doesn't really show anything graphically south of of 20 degree of 25 degrees north so um, we're just um, very little south of 25 degrees north but I'm going to uh, you, you can already see that it, it's further south and west with the track 
and uh, kind of skims it back to the idea of just basically bouncing off uh, the north central coast of Cuba before it turns northward. The, the main difference with the NAM, you know, it, it went from being out at like 76 or 7 west to 79 west last night. Now it's baked, it, it's at about 80 or 81. Uh, the basic, uh, the, the track shape is the same. Uh, it is just moved to the left. And this brings the eye of the hurricane right on land west of Miami. Uh, and this is as far as we go, which is a Sunday evening uh, at uh, 8 p.m. So I want to be very curious to see what the global models do with this in uh, just a little bit when they start coming out. Uh, but uh, apparently there must be at least enough uh, going on in the upper layers of the atmosphere with regards to the uh, upper high uh, that is steering this. And you can uh, take a look here at the upper air. There's that trough in the east. And actually the trough not only looks less deep, but you can see this other upper low that's forming near Alabama and Georgia, and, and it's going to respond to that by turning northward. That looks perhaps to be forming a bit sooner on the NAM model. So the, these are important my, uh, developments. Um, you know, the minor changes in the upper atmosphere are going to sh dictate uh, uh, path shifts of uh, 30 or 40 miles, which in this case is going to be um, huge. So we are, um, you know, I'm getting, I am, uh, you know, very concerned here that we're going to have uh, a hurricane come bodily on to the Florida Peninsula uh, over the weekend. So I think if you're watching from down there, if you are on the east coast of Florida, particularly if you're in that hurricane warning area, you need to seriously consider, if you're, if you're near the shore, you need to seriously uh, consider uh, your decision if you've decided not to, to uh, evacuate. And I would strongly urge that you uh, contact your local uh, officials in your area to uh, see what their recommendations are, uh, along with uh, the National Hurricane Center and your local National Weather Service uh, office. Uh, we have, this is the recon from last night. Uh, I'm going to uh, add the new one and we'll take a look at what it's doing. Just give me a moment here, folks. Just got to find it. And aircraft recon. Okay, great. And we'll put it up. There we go. So you can see uh, the motion on the three passes that it made uh, moving west northwest and the pressure looks to be kind of steady around 920 millibars. We have 921, 921, 920. Um, so a drop of a millibar between the second and third pass. And uh, we have uh, belts of winds of 137 knots or higher. So this remains a major hurricane uh, and will I'm thinking, you know, the, the way it, it's been almost unrelenting in how it's wanted to hold on to its strength through all of this. And it's just uh, uh, remarkable, really, um, that it, it, it's done. Uh, it, it's held on like this, but it's taking an almost perfect track in terms of staying far enough away from the big islands where the circulation is not disruptive, disrupted. And then it goes right over the um warmest waters that are in the Atlantic, which is off the southeast coast uh, out to the Bahamas and uh, further east. So uh, if the, the GFS has been wanting to strengthen this back to, to you know, bring, bring the strength on this up to a uh, very, very strong Category 5 hurricane. Okay, we finally were able to pull down the map with the um, new advisories and uh, the added watches that have been put up for Florida. So you can see it runs down the from Bonita Beach uh, on the west side, uh, south, including all of the keys, and then up and around uh, to uh, Jupiter Inlet. So all of South Florida uh, in that hurricane watch now. And you can see the extent of the warnings. And here's the Hurricane Center's track. Now, just bear in mind that there's kind of a, a bit of a lag time in terms of their forecast. So uh, the forecast that you're seeing here is not that dissimilar to the forecast that they had from overnight and this morning. So the new model runs are coming out now. So they'll have them for the af late afternoon advisory. And if, if, they, the, if the westward trend is noted 
uh, by by uh, the majority of the models, I guarantee you they're going to probably shift that track a little bit further to the west. But either way, to me, it seems that it's sort of it, it's it's way too close uh, for comfort here. Um, and with regards to um, uh, a landfall in South Florida, I mean, you know, it, it, it's perilously close, and the NAM would certainly suggest that there will definitely be a uh, a landfall. Um, so uh, we'll um, we'll just kind of have to wait and see what all the afternoon model runs do with this. I mean, th this is a um, a bit of a development here, and it's not a surprising one. Uh, the risk was always there that models would trend to the west, and uh, in, in see, you know, let's see if this continues. We now have the NAM and the UCMET doing this. The European last night was kind of in the middle. Uh, but it's not that far off from what the NAM is showing uh, this morning. It's actually pretty close to it. Um, I'm going to, like I said, this is uh, to the point now where I'm just kind of, you know, shrugging my shoulders. I'll let, why don't we, I'll go back to the model. So let's take a look at Jose. And we'll got to go to the GFS. And we'll take a look at what the model uh, did with Jose. And... I have to change regions. And let's uh, let's put the, the 10 meter wind. So we'll back it up. And the the trend on the models with Jose has been west and south. And and you can see it right here. It on this run, it actually passes it over the same islands that just went through Irma. Of course, it has it as a weaker hurricane. The upper air conditions might be a bit different here. It may strengthen uh, to a major hurricane, but uh, there are they may there may be shear issues here going forward. Um, it, that might make a difference. It may wind up making it a weaker storm. But you know what? When 90% of your island has been wiped out uh, just a few days before, uh, you know this is really just adding insult to injury. If this winds up going over the leewards, it'll be it, it, it'll be just. Uh, astounding that they would have had two hurricanes back to back within just a handful of days. And you can see the GFS's handling of Irma last night, just skimming the south coast of Florida. But the difference between the um, the GFS and today's dam is only, as I said, maybe about uh, 50 or 60 miles. So uh, we're going to have to just wait till uh, the uh, rest of the model runs start coming out uh, a little bit uh, later on. Uh, the GFS will be starting in a little while. Uh, and we'll uh, see the European and all the other models. So uh, I'm just going to real quick go through some of what your, your, you know, if you guys have any questions. Um, Tornado, you're correct. As we're now inside four days, models are going to get keep getting closer and closer together, and they seem to be with a westward bias. Um, uh, well, uh, let's see. And then, of course, the next stop after that will be the southeast coast of the United States. I'm not sure exactly what form it will take in terms of the strength of Irma. That remains to be seen. But I would make the assumption that it would still be a major hurricane of some sort and um, kind of uh, use that as one of the pieces of information that you would use to um, make whatever decisions you you need to make. Um, OK. Uh, you know, Mike Garofalo, you're in Tampa, so you're on the northwest coast. You know, if you've got a hurricane that's going up the east coast, you will get some gusty winds, uh, likely. Uh, depending on the, the hurricane itself, it's hard to say, you know, how strong those winds would be. Uh, I, 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 again, I, I would, you know, defer to your local officials for recommendations on these things. Uh, I can't really make, make a good judgment call on that. My own personal view on this sort of thing is when you're, you know, in when something's in question, it's better to be safe than sorry. But, um, you know, everybody's got to make their own decisions. Um, so, look, uh, why don't we uh, we'll leave it here at this point? And uh, again, and just to reiterate, we have hurricane watches up for Irma <clears throat> for uh, the uh, for Florida uh, and for the east coast of Florida from Jupiter Inlet around the base of the state over the Keys and then up the west coast to Bonita Beach. Uh, we've got the warnings up for the Bahamas and uh, uh, places to the west, the north shore of the Dominican Republic and, and uh, the north shore of Cuba. Separately, 
uh, the Leeward Islands under a hurricane watch. And by the way, it just occurred to me, communications in the Leeward Islands is, in, in a lot of areas is completely cut off. They may not even know that there's something coming. That is really, you know, uh, uh, that is, that, that's scary. Uh, they do not know that there's a second hurricane that might threaten them. Uh, and uh, my, that's, you know, that, that is so scary uh, for them. Uh, I hope that that word does get out that at least that so at least people are aware uh, of what's happening. Um, but because this is this is quite you know this is incredibly serious for them. All right, folks, we're going to leave it there. Have a, a great day, and um, I will uh, see you tonight. Uh, we'll uh, live. We'll try and live stream uh, another uh, uh, an, a, another uh, video with. Uh, my, we'll do it. Try, we'll do it live with uh, Joe Rayo uh, and myself. Uh, sometime later this evening, and then I'll try and update things for you tonight uh, around or just after midnight.